So I've just seen a talk on uh, communication in uh, uh, how to communicate effectively and I couldn't hear what he was saying and I couldn't read the slides properly. So not so, uh, not so good on the communication for that, uh, that one. And uh, it's often possible. So six o'clock in the morning, uh, it's the BARPS conference today, which is our annual plastic surgery conference. Trains at 6.23, cup of tea, uh, bowl of cornflakes, and then I'm out of here. So I'm in London and uh, my preferred form of transport is walking or getting a bus. Houston to Olympia, it's quite hard to get on the train, on the tube, and I don't particularly like the tube. And there is a bus that goes straight from Houston to Olympia. So I'm gonna get on that bus, it takes about an hour, it's quite a long way. And um, I say I'm gonna do that. I've been looking for the bus. I thought it was a number 10, but I don't know if my memory's wrong or they've stopped doing a number 10 bus. But anyway, I'm gonna rise above it and look for the number 10. You know what, I love that number 10 bus, um, but I've just Googled it and uh, it stopped in November, 2018. It went straight to Olympia. So um, I think I'm gonna have to get the train. So, so much for that. So, if you're looking for the number 10 bus, it finished in November 2018. It takes about an hour to get from Houston to Olympia, and it only takes an hour and a half to get from Birmingham to London. Crazy. The tube is packed. That was plan B. Plan A was the number 10. The tube's packed, so I'm going to go plan C, which is a number 27 bus from Warren Street. Just Googled it, so uh, let's see how we get on with that. So, on paper, the 27 is going to get there. Uh, from uh, Warren Street, which I'm, he I'm here now. Who'd have thought there'd be so much drama before we even started? Like I say, these buses look packed. They weren't too packed, so I don't know how that's going to pan out. Uh, I do like the bus. I do like to be above ground. Let's have a look around, especially top deck, especially the front. I used to be a cycle courier when I was a medical student in London, so I know the streets and uh, it's actually often easier to walk places than it is to get the tube. Who knows when the next bus is going to get here. Uh, right, I'm here. Made it a uh, pretty good journey actually. It was better than the 10 route. I think it was a bit quicker. I think they're trying to stop congestion on Oxford Street. That's why they stopped the 10. So 27 it is. So uh, we're here at the uh, CCR, gotta go in and barbs. So I've just seen a talk on uh, communication in uh, uh, how to communicate effectively and I couldn't hear what he was saying and I couldn't read the slides properly. So not so, uh, not so good on the communication for that, uh, that one but um, I'm not allowed to film in the BARPS bit, so that's why I'm not filming, but um, I'm allowed to film in the rest of it, but to be honest with you, it's, uh, it's a bit beyond me, all the uh, machines they've got here. Not sure about the science behind it, but uh, they certainly look very nice. So as I said, uh, weren't really allowed to um, video in the uh, meeting but uh, it was uh, it was interesting I think you could say the main things they were talking about were body contouring surgery to enhance the body form a lot of male uh, surgery a lot of contouring for abs and six packs things like liposuction to calves to increase definition of the calves uh, uh, fat grafting into the male chest to increase the pectoral muscles and the deltoid and the biceps. Um, not really things that were my thing, not really my patient demographic, not really the thing that I specialize in. I feel and um, I talk a lot about cosmetic surgery being restorative, about being um, uh, balancing out asymmetries, bringing people into proportion, um, a lot of my patients have lost weight, have uh, become pregnant, have got excess skin, 
and want to be more in proportion and look normal. This was more about sort of supercharging people, these male models, these bikini models who look fantastic before they even had surgery, having this sort of body contouring surgery. Interesting to watch, not really my uh, area and my specialty, but very interesting to see what's going on out there in the world. Uh, a lot of overseas surgeons, not sure how many surgeons in the UK are doing that sort of stuff. Uh, and certainly I'm not, um, I'm not one of them, but it was, uh, it was very interesting to watch. So... Um, been a bit of talk today about the um, use of implants and obviously people are you worried about textured implants and moving towards smoother implants but there's bad things about smooth implants in terms of uh, rippling and edgy feeling the edges of them so they're using these nano textured implants and they're fat grafting over the top of the implants which is interesting uh, fat grafting is a really good technique uh, which I used to do a lot. I don't do so much these days, but it uh, looks like it's coming back in. Uh, these things are uh, driven by the surgeons from the States, which are obviously doing a lot, doing composite uh, breast implants with fat grafting. And I think that has got mileage because uh, you're putting the implant in and then you're any risk of being able to feel the edge or anything uh, in terms of getting rippling of the implant, you're putting fat over the implant to give it a smoother contour and to give it a more natural look. The problem with it is the cost. Fat grafting is expensive and if you uh, combine it with uh, putting implants in, that's a very expensive operation. So I don't know what they're doing in America. They're obviously um, charging a lot for the surgery. I don't know if we could do that in the UK, but I think that's probably uh, something that we could do if we can um, work out it to be a cost-effective thing or, or if someone really um, wants the ideal situation that might be an option so yeah that was interesting